just a few hours from the NFL draft, and we are getting conflicting reports about what the Denver Broncos intend to do in Thursday night's draft. Are we trading up? I'm going to go over the reports that say we are. Are we trading back? I'll go over the reports that say we're trading back, and are we going to draft at 12? I'll go over some of those, and I'll give my takes on it as well. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ben. I break down all things Denver sports. Uh, I love doing this, and if you like Denver Broncos content, it helps me out a lot if you like and subscribe. So a lot of times I feel the imposter syndrome, like, man, I was the third string running back on Huron Middle School's um, football team. What am I doing talking about football? And then I see all of these real insiders on NFL Network, on ESPN, all saying completely opposite things, all which probably are incorrect. And so at least I'm out there with like, my job is to try to find good news and share it with all y'all. Uh, and so that's what I'm doing. So let's dive into the reports that are conflicting, both those saying that we're about to trade up for JJ and those that saying we're going to trade back and try to get Bo Nix and others. Uh, and then I'll tell you what I hope happens. So the first thing is that we have uh, multiple people out there saying that Sean Payton wants Bo Nix and knows that he can get Bo Nix uh, later in the draft and also get a coveted second round draft pick by trading back. So it sounds like the Eagles want to move up. Sounds like the New Orleans Saints want to move up. Deshaun Payton want to help his old team. Uh, we remember the feud and the beef that he had with um, at New Orleans, and he's super good friends with a lot of people there. So does he want to uh, smooth things over and also collect a, a second round draft pick? And so you had Tom Pelissero say it's way more likely that the Broncos trade back from 12 rather than trade up. Uh, we see that exact same thing here. Jonathan Jones of CBS reported um, is that um, Todd McShay also saying that there's a lot of movement specifically on moving back uh, because there's going to be like a top tackle. There's going to be a top edge rusher. There's going to be the top corner. Probably the top corner will probably still be there at 12. We signed uh, a veteran corner. We are really high on Riley Moss, obviously McMillian, uh, Pat Sertan. We're in a really good shape there. And so if Sean Payton indeed wants Bo Nix, trading back is smart. Now you, you see dudes like DMAC who say, that that is the dumbest thing ever, that it, it shows that you're not truly committed to Bo Nix if you are trading back. But I think like if you know without a shadow of the doubt that Bo Nix is your dude and that he's going to be there at 25 when you trade back, I don't think it shows a lack of commitment to him. And so I think there that's not necessarily uh, a dumb move or it doesn't necessarily show that we aren't committed to him as long as we still give him the same length of runway to try out and to um, show that he can be the dude, as long as we give him the same amount of time, the same amount of snaps at the 25th pick as we would if we drafted him at 12, I don't think there's anything wrong with trading back. In fact, I think that's kind of smart. I think that's kind of what the signing of Zach Wilson gives us the power to do is that uh, we know that uh, a first round quarterback is a 36% hit rate. And so, you know, Bo Nix or JJ or any of those 36% chance that they sign a second round contract, I would say, what is the chances that uh, Zach Wilson balls out of control? Just a few years ago, he was the second pick in the draft. And if you go and just type in Zach Wilson highlights, you're going to be blown away. I got Mahomes vibes like he's throwing no looks across the middle. And Sean Payton will be the best coach he has ever had in the NFL uh, full stop. Like there's no one who would even argue that. And so I think what the chances of him succeeding is a 20% chance. And so, uh, I, I just feel like Sean Payton has a lot of rods in the water and I hope we find a fish. I, I really do. So the situation in which I would be comfortable trading back is if, if Brock Bowers is still on the board, when we get to 12, I think we would be foolish to look past him. We know how important the tight end position is to Sean Payton. And so, if Bowers is still on the board at, at 12, when a lot of big boards have him as like right behind Marvin Harrison as one of the best players in this entire draft, and you could get him at 12, it would feel foolish to to do that. And then if if you want to leverage picks and trade back up into the end of the third round and, and get your quarterback, um, you could do that. But uh, then... You go on uh, here and see that our boy, the Sheriff, the best quarterback to play in Denver in the past 10 years, is Peyton Manning, who came on Z Zach Stokely, or yes, yeah, Stokely and Dover's show, and said that he knows that the Denver Broncos are in love with J.J. McCarthy and is very interested. 
uh, and it's a mutual admiration society. We've heard Zach Wilson really allude to the fact that, he, or not Zach Wilson, uh, J.J. McCarthy allude to the fact that he wants to play here too. And so if they both love each other, um, I, I think, a, you know, I trust Sean Payton to find the quarterback and do whatever it takes to get him, whether that is trade back if you're sure you can get him late in, in the draft, do it. Um, but uh, I, I think trading up to four or five is you're, we're going to have to give up too much. And I, I'm not cool with that. So if some, for some reason um, JJ McCarthy falls to eight and Atlanta's pick is available and all you have to do is give up like a third, like Chicago did when they had to move up a couple picks or when they moved back a couple picks, like if all we had to do is give up a third and a fourth round pick to move up to eight, I'd be totally cool doing that. But at the end of the day, I trust Sean Payton. I think he is batting about 90% here for the Broncos, and I trust he's going to continue to do that. So trade up, trade back, or draft at 12. I heard too many times in that um, preseason press conference, or that pre-draft press conference, we're going to find a great guy at 12. They didn't lock into saying we're going to find our quarterback at 12. They just said multiple times we're going to find a great talent at 12. And so I, w- I would be surprised if you look at Sean Payton. I think the stat is the past seven drafts he's moved up and he's almost never moved back. And I just don't envision that happening when you need to change so much here. Uh, it really is going to rely on finding a star. And I think you will. Other uh, news that has kind of been quashed is I do not envision uh, the, oh, this was the other report saying that we're going to trade up. And this was Peter Schrager of Good Morning Football. He was on with Pat McAfee and said that J.J. McCarthy is very much in play for the Denver Broncos. So you got Peyton Manning and uh, Peter Schrager saying J.J.'s in play. And then you got um, multiple others saying we're, we're moving back. So who knows? This helps me not have the imposter syndrome because I have just as much of a clue as any of these. Y'all have just as much of a clue as any of these. And that's one of the great parts about Sean Payton is that his his cards are right up against his chest and you're never going to see him, uh, even if you're sitting courtside with him at the Denver Nuggets game. And I think that's a stark difference to where we've had in the past where um, you have multiple people who know all of our dirty laundry before it is spilled. And I, I like that about how they're running this ship. So Adam Schefter came out today and tweeted that the Denver Broncos have extended next year's fifth round option on Pat Sertan, clearly showing that this is a a brilliant pick. I remember how many people, including DMAC on 104.3 The Fan, said that picking Patrick Sertan was a nightmare. We should have picked Justin Fields. Well, look who is back for fifth year option. And then there are multiple reports that not only did he sign a fifth year option, we'll do a, at least a three-year extension of him, which would allow us to flex that Walter uh, Penner Walmart money and front load all that in a signing bonus, which then spreads it out over the three years and reduces a cap hit. So we're going to have the highest paid corner in the league, but not have the cap hit that we would if, if we structured the contract normally. And I, I like that a lot. I also think this signals that Patrick Sertan will not be involved in uh, the a uh, a move up for JJ McCarthy. So if we are moving up for him, it will not be certain packaged in there, or we probably would not have done this. Uh, the next team he would go to would probably do that and not us. So I think uh, very, very interesting tell there. I also think just what we've done at corner this year in, in adding uh, Wallace out of Pittsburgh shows that we probably will not be picking a cornerback in the first round of the draft pick that with Riley Moss coming on. Feeling great about that, and obviously Sertan McMillian feel really good about that as well. So cannot wait for Thursday night. Make sure you are here. Make sure you're subbed, and uh, it's going to be an absolute blast. Got some special things in store for all y'all, and uh, I'm about to pull a Jamal Murray over Anthony Davis. Four, three, two, giddy up. Guys, yes, that is good news. That is, oh, that is neat stuff.